going to give you a little warning today about lazy expository preaching. Okay, I mentioned a little bit about this in one of my studies, but I think I need to really kind of kick this a little bit harder. Um, a lot of people have been saying to me, Brother Brian, when are you going to start doing some expository preaching, going verse by verse through entire books of the Bible and whatever else? Well, I've done some of that. I have. I'm not against it. But I've seen over the years that a lot of uh, people that call themselves Christians, they'll, they'll do this thing of expository preaching and they'll do two or three verses. And I've seen this thing for years and years. Uh, I used to go to Baptist churches and the preachers would do this. And, you know, when you get into ministry, I understand very much the thing, the time constraints and everything else. It's, it takes a lot of time. Um, I, I've been snowed under for so many years now. I, I just kind of try to trudge along through the, through everything that I have to do. I have, you know, I, I'm terrible at answering people's letters. Um, I, I'm not really good at getting back to people. Uh, there's a lot of things that I have to, I have to let go um, I'm not the best in the comments and whatever else. I get it. But I'm constantly trying to research. I'm constantly trying to answer people's questions and bring out studies that will get people saved. New groups of people, not just your standard old, tired gospel presentations that people have heard and, you know, whatever. I'm trying to get people to think and get them convicted so that they can get saved. That's what I do. And it requires a lot of research, uh, a whole lot of research. And I spend... A lot of time doing that and witnessing to people on secular channels and I'm very active with that that's part of my ministry and but I keep seeing this thing of this expository preaching and uh, from my experience going to church buildings for all my life you know I mean I was dedicated as a baby in a church building Calvary Monument Bible Church in in Lancaster County Pennsylvania and so I was raised in churches and I've seen this thing where preachers, you can tell when they're getting lazy because what they'll do is they'll just, they'll pick a verse or two and then they just park on that. And then they'll talk about things and they'll relate to things and whatever else. And a lot of times what these guys can do too, they'll get a, I have one up here, I'm not going to get it down, but a Thompson Chain Reference Bible. And they'll, they'll go and you can even do it here. This is a, you know, center reference, column reference thing. And they can, I mean, you you can just take the first two verses here, First Peter chapter 1, and you can go over here and it says, A, there's letter A, John 7, 35, Acts 2, verses 5 through 9. This verse 2, there's Romans 8, 29, 2 Thessalonians 2, 13, Hebrews 10, 22. And you, and you, can, just, you can just milk that system and just preach this expository style and, oh, the Lord showed me this and showed me that, and you get this type of thing over here too, the Ruckman commentaries. And he'll give you all the verse tie-ins and this tie-ins to that and this ties to that and whatever else. And, and what happens is you get a lazy preacher. They don't want to put in the research. They don't really want to, to get before the Lord and say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to preach? Let me put it out there to the body of Christ. What do you want me to preach and, and whatever? And I mean, those of you that have been with me for years and years, you know how many times I respond to user or users, viewers... Uh, viewer comments and they say, hey, brother, could you do a sermon on this? I've not heard anything on this. Do you have a sermon on this? That's the majority of this ministry. And it takes time. It's very difficult to go through the studies. And sometimes it might take me a year to get around to answering somebody's question because it's a really deep, profound question. And I have to put in the time to study it. The Lord has to show me in my own life how the verse works out. It's difficult. But I see this thing, these lazy preachers, they'll come in with this expository preaching and they just want to take you by the hand and just lead you through the Bible and they know that they can just milk that thing out and they can come out with years, they have years of preaching ahead of them and, and just verse by verse by verse by verse and they don't have to do the, the, the hard leg work of actually researching and tying the Bible in with a lot of other subjects and things like that. They don't want to do that. So I'm just going to warn you about that. You see, what's the real warning here? The warning is you should be the one doing expository teaching. You need to be the one that goes through the Bible and not, you know, I have to have holy Peter Ruckman over here um, and or uh, 
you know, John MacArthur over here, or the pulpit commentary over there, or this down here, or that over here. A lot of this stuff has been given to me. I don't buy a lot of this. You know, I need to have commentaries on this and commentaries on that. And I have a, um, you know, Defender Study Bible here somewhere. Uh, you know, I need to look at that. I need to make sure that I check with all the church fathers and all the, all the different, you know, holy men of God to make sure that my interpretation of Scripture is correct. No, you need to actually read it yourself. The Holy Spirit is there to teach you what this book says. You don't need me. Right? Praise the Lord for good preachers. I, fine. Worthy of double honor. You know, great. Esteem them very love and, and are very highly in love for their work's sake. Fine. Wonderful. I appreciate people that, that encourage me. That's great. But when it comes to expository preaching, going through the scriptures and reading it, you need to do that for yourself. Let me show you the, what the scriptures say. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Now see, in the original Greek, <clears throat> which I have over here, the original Greek says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of your local church pastor, as long as he has a PhD. Or THD, that's fine. Honorary doctorate, eh, not as safe. Is that what it says? Desire the sincere milk of the uh, YouTube preacher. The commentary. The, no, just of the word. Um, you don't need to have some kind of special preacher there that can teach you verse by verse what this book says. That's between you and the Lord. I mean, you know, um, get married to my wife and, and uh, say, you know, we go through our little ceremony and whatever else that we had. And I say, OK, now I need somebody here to guide me and tell me what it's, it's you know, how to be married and how to. No, it's me and her. I didn't take my parents with us on our honeymoon or her parents along on our honeymoon. That would have been awful. You know, or anybody else. I need a qualified uh, marriage counselor to go with me for the rest of my time in marriage so I make sure I don't mess up. Then why would you want that from a preacher? Hey, brother, I, I need to know the Bible. I need to understand the scriptures so you take me verse by verse through it, okay? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Can the Holy Spirit teach you the scriptures? Why do you need a man to go through and teach you verse by verse? And again, you know, anytime I've done an expository type of study, it's just, uh, here's the whole chapter. Boom, done. But I've seen these fakers and they'll come out and they'll just, they'll park on two or three verses of scripture and they'll just, you know, blah, 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 make it look like there's some kind of a special expert. Um, I, I'm not going to judge somebody's salvation for writing a commentary, but quite frankly, I would be afraid to write a commentary. I don't want to write a commentary Bible. You know, the Denlinger Study Bible. Or some, oh, huh, huh. No, I don't think so. Um, that doesn't interest me at all. I'll show you another verse here. Ephesians chapter 5. So, you know, this is a, actually partly a rebuke, a loving rebuke for you, my viewers out there that have said, could you please do some expository preaching? Um, there's a lot of other things I need to preach on, a lot of other subjects I need to preach on. And, uh, you know, my revelation for Bible-believing Christians, that's crossing dispensational lines, and I'm saying instruction in righteousness. That was an interesting study. I enjoyed doing that. Um, and I might do that. People said, could you do that for the book of Hebrews? The book of Hebrews for Bible-believing Christians. It's not doctrinally for us, but are there some applications? You know, there are some doctrines that line up with what we have today you know, throughout the Pauline epistles. But what I'm saying is go through it in kind of a unique way and whatever. Well, maybe, I don't know. That might be there, but uh, I mean, read it for yourself. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 27 Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he, he, who's the he? Jesus Christ, might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, as long as it comes through the pastor, right? <laughs> that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. You're to have that relationship with Jesus Christ, brethren. You read the Bible. You say, well, I, I, I do, brother, but there's some things I don't understand. Okay, then ask the Lord to explain it to you. Keep reading it until you understand it. 
Well, I, I've read it through 15 times and I still don't get it. Okay, then move on to the next chapter and wait for the Lord to show that to you. Meditate on the scriptures. Think about the word of God all day. You know, people say to me, you know, how do you come up with so many different unique uh, sermons, brother? Because I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm a, I'm a crazy man. <laughs> All I think about is the Word of God. Occasionally I'll talk about, you know, some other worldly subject or something, some vehicle or some, oh, look, there's a moose walking by or, you know, some gun or some, you know, some other type of a thing or whatever that I might be interested in or, oh, look, it's snowing a lot. But for the most part, we talk about the Bible. You get to be around us, uh, we talk about the Scriptures all the time. Just all the time. That's what we do. But uh, when it comes to studying the Word, I don't want anybody else in there. I mean, you know, I want to talk to the Lord in private. There's some times that I love my son very dearly, but uh, there's times I just say, hey, son, could you go outside and play? Dad and Mom need to talk about something. We need to have a private conversation here. Hey, son, we're outside. You run on ahead. We need to talk about some things here. And he'll, he'll you know, I'll see him. He'll be over playing with his bicycle or something, and then he'll come over, and I say, son, we're not done talking yet. Dad and Mom are talking about some private things here. Some things that are only between the two of us. Go on over there. My little boy, the boy that I love. Well, uh, there's some times that I don't want to be around other people, including my wife. Why? Well, because I'm with uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm reading the book for myself. And reading verse by verse. And you know what? There's some times my wife does the same thing. And it used to bug me. And I'd, you know, she'd be over there and she'd have the Bible open and she'd be furiously writing things down. I'd say, what's the Lord showing you? Honey. Oh, I, what? Huh? Oh, I, just a, a few things here. And I'd say, well, yeah, but just, you know, I'm, I'm a preacher. You know, hey, you know, come on here. You know, if any would learn anything, let him ask at home. You know, ask, let her ask her husband at home. 1 Corinthians 14. You know, hey, you should be asking me. And, I, you know, and I started getting to a point where I looked and I said, you know what, the Lord's dealing with her. It's her and the Lord right now. She's searching the scriptures for herself. She doesn't need me. And I say, okay. And I walk away and I say, Lord, show her some things. I pray that you and her have a good time together. Oh, honey, let me come in and expositorily preach the word of God for you. No, I'm not going to. Hey, honey, let me write down the scriptures for you and, and explain exactly what these verses mean to you. No. She has questions, of course I'll answer them. You have questions, of course I'll answer your questions. But brethren, this watch out for this expository preaching stuff. It can be an excuse for you to put down the Bible. And again, I'm going to be talking about this in the next study, but uh, I've seen this thing where you get these people and they, oh, I got saved, brother, and I'm, I'm born again, and, and everything's all exciting, and all of a sudden their life just goes, boom, and they fall off a cliff, and they're getting and messing up all kinds of sin. What happened? They put the book down. Brother Brian does my preaching for me. Brother Brian is my savior, apparently, or something. Uh, he, he leads me through the, the scriptures. No, you need to lead yourself through the scriptures because I can't be there for you all the time. And you will mess up if I am your, you know, official preacher, teacher, savior, whatever. Uh, don't think that. Okay? So... It's really needed to kick this whole system because, you know, it, it just, there are a few things that you can get as a, as a babe in Christ. And, you know, you should be doing on your own. And uh, I'll answer the more difficult questions. I'll go out and fight the battles against the heretics that try to come in and mess us up and everything else. And I'll fight those guys. I'll go out after the post-tribbers and the Trinitarians and the, you know, non-dispensational nut Baptists and whatever else, other heretical cults and the new versionists and, and whatever. I'll fight those guys. But, you know, because they get into a lot of arguments that are con, or, you know, not necessarily in the scriptures and they'll bring in side arguments and things. I mean, that's what this whole thing is for here. You know, the Catholics and down there and textual criticism here and, you know, King James only type of stuff up in here. I'll fight those battles for you. I understand most people can't get into all the, the fine details of, of every little subject out there. Fine, that's what I do. Um, but when it comes to expository preaching, 
especially this thing of going two or three verses or something, and let's let's talk about this, and you know, and, and get into all this stuff. Well, it's fine to share that with brethren. I don't have a problem with that. But if that's the basis for a ministry, expository preaching, ew, I have a problem with that. So please take it to heart, brethren. Um, please study the Word of God for yourself. Okay? Uh, that's so important. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.